what's up everybody and welcome back to my let's play of the legend of zelda the wind waker hd in the last episode we completed up some side quests on windfall island and then made our way to the three triangle islands in order to make this giant tower up here uh which is actually our next dungeon and so without further ado we shall waste no time and head right on inside and this is the tower of the gods pretty insane area and it's got some pretty cool music actually uh, so what we immediately want to do is we want to take um, to the east and uh, the gimmick of this area is the water will constantly yeah lower and raise itself onto different heights and we have to use that to uh, our advantage um, and it sometimes can be to our disadvantage like right now I need to get into the door that's underneath the water at the moment and we have to wait for the water to actually move back down and hopefully we don't drown we shouldn't though yeah so the water will constantly raise and lower itself um, to your advantage or disadvantage in order for, um, in order for you to move forward. Alright, so first things first. Grab this chew. It's actually a yellow chew. And the key thing with this guy is he always stays lit. Um, can't hit him in this state, I don't think. No, we have to wait for the water to move back down. Alright, come on water. You can do it. He's getting a little close. A little too close for comfort. So this is a yellow chew. He always stays it lit until you hit him with the boomerang. Uh, but he doesn't drop yellow chew jelly. It's only red because there's no such thing as yellow chew jelly, actually. Right, I'm going to need my bombs here in a second. Because uh, I'm going to time some throws. Yeah, that, that one went in time so well. Wait till it almost explodes. Boom. There we go. Now, I don't actually remember what's... Um, here and we also could just place move the platforms over in order to blow up these platforms but uh there's no real point um we can just stand on one of these platforms here that's on the water already and just throw the throw them without a problem and uh here's a chest i open it up and it's got this little cut scene here so you know it's an important item and this item is the item we came for the dungeon map sweet all right so now um, I kind of want to open up the other bombable areas and uh, uh oh more choose to get into this room hopefully they don't attack me yeah I had a feeling that was gonna happen just see now they'll inch towards me yeah I just want to drop this here and run out of the way um, I don't think that actually has anything behind it no just a ruby all right Alright, um, come on guys, I'm gonna need you all to die. There we go, oh! I almost got hit there. Oh, green tree jelly, I'll take it. Boom, there we go. And just another yellow chew. Alright, I thought there might be something hidden behind those doors, so... It Kind of wasted a bit of time in here. But I wasn't exactly 100% sure anyway. Um, so now that we've done that, um, we now want to head over this way. I don't think there's... I mean, we can blow up these walls over there. There's also another wall that's right through there. Um, but I don't think there's anything we actually can do on that side of the dungeon just yet. If memory serves me well, it may not. It may, it may actually be something we need to do over here. Alright. Alright, but we actually need to head over to this corner. Yeah, um, this is the next room. We need to let the water raise itself first. So that room kind of was at a disadvantage when the water was raised. This room is going to be different, in which case we will be at a disadvantage when it's lowered. Um, but we need two items. We need to get an item right here. And you'll see what that is in just a moment. First, we need to take this, place it, place it, not throw it, here on this platform to open the door. And those guys kind of remind me a lot of the um, Armos from Twilight Princess, actually, which of course this game came before, so obviously they took inspiration from those guys right there. And I uh, use those guys in um, Twilight Princess anyway, specifically to, uh, to your advantage. Apparently we can't climb on those so it looks like we're gonna need to get down here it appears and do something else with these boxes it 
appears, it's going to be, uh, place them, maybe, there we go, now the platform will only appear while the water is not raised, of course, so we have to be kind of cautious of that, and can we grab the ladder, thank you, alright, that box should lower directly down to where we need it to, and of course, if you accidentally break both of those, you can always just exit the room and then re-enter, because if it breaks, then you can just simply grab it and you'll be okay. Don't go back up water, please. Sweet. You see, the door's actually glowing. So once we get close to the door, yeah, we don't actually have to open it. It'll just open on its own. We don't have to open it ourselves. At least I don't I think Link may actually open it himself. I, I've actually not seen the cutscene. I haven't paid attention, actually, to be honest. It may not work like that. I'm not sure. I mean, this giant gate behind us now uh, lowers itself. And that'll come in. That'll be an advantage to us. Because now we can make our way um, through this bottom floor. Once we get through this bottom floor, this is like a third of the dungeon. Like, it's a lot of it, really. Because once you kind of leave this area, you're pretty much done. You know, almost. Hold up. Oh, no, that was just a pillar. I thought that was like a uh, treasure or something. Oh, no. It went back down. Alright, we'll wait a second. Um, but yeah, once you get through this final floor, there's like a couple rooms left, and then you're pretty much straight to the top. Like, this area looks huge like the tower looks absolutely insane but there's only four floors now the third the second floor actually does have quite a few rooms but they're really small and you only have to pass through them like twice like on your way to the end and not on your way back and the last thing we need to do is no i don't well um all right beyond this place you must do battle with the power of the gods but even as you do so you may also borrow that power uh, well, no, I guess. It's not really my intention to talk to you at the moment. It was kind of more to place these down. This game kind of confuses me because normally you either press B to uh, let it put it down or you press A to put it back down. But no, A is to throw and actually ZR is to place it down, which is kind of strange. We need to break that, but I'm sure there's some sort of platform we can make show up, perhaps? Or not. Um, come on, you push this this way. No, nah, okay, that may not work actually. Yeah, they may be a little too close together. Luckily, we have two sticks, so if we mess this up, yeah, they're a little too far apart. Uh, they actually need to. These two need to scoot a little closer together. So this one needs to go this way, and then this one. Nope. On. Let me push it before the water goes back up. There we go. All right, this stick should still be on top. Yeah, and I can just pick it up again. So you won't actually lose the stick, so you should be good in that regard. And plus, you have more. Uh, but our main goal is to jump across this gap before yeah, it runs out of time. That will cause another chest to appear. All right, sweet. And inside this chest is a small key um which is you know, of course pretty important and uh yeah more green yellow shoes i think we just swim our way back without a problem maybe not for some reason their electricity doesn't kind of move through the whole room which is kind of crazy because you know if you know anything about electricity you know it flows really well in water and that's why they're taking it to take or you guys may have never actually heard this, but um, they always tell you never take showers during a thunderstorm because the lightning can hit your pipes, travel through the water, and you can get electrocuted, and it can do some pretty nasty harm. And they also say, you know, don't go swimming during a uh, thunderstorm as well uh, because water is a very good conductor, and uh, it likes to have a lot of electricity flow uh, through it, if that makes any sense. And geez, now we have to wait again. That's the only problem with this dungeon and the reason why it can take a little bit is because you just miss out on the patterns of the water and it takes another second or two for the uh, this thing for actually to go back up and stuff so you kind of have to wait a little bit. And I'm sorry if I sound a little nasally as well. Uh, I've got a bit of allergies going on now that the seasons are kind of starting to change and stuff. It's kind of really messing with my uh, 
allergies a good bit, so uh, sorry if I sound a little, a little nasally for these next couple of episodes, I guess. Uh, we have a new enemy here. I don't actually remember the name. I think it's a... Uh... Do I just have to hit you with my sword? Yeah, I guess so. And that's it. Alright, sweet. And you gave me a ruby, not bad. Alright, I'm gonna open up this chest and it contains another important item, of course. Inside this is the dungeon compass. Now, my suspicion tells me that we're not supposed to be in here quite yet for some reason. But, um, because there's not really anything else to do in here, unless this was literally the only purpose of this room, because what we're actually looking for is a door that holds a small key, and there's going to be a locked door. At least there's supposed to be. I could be wrong. Unless it's over there, and I've just missed it. Oh yeah, it's down there. Sweet. Alright. All right, okay, I see what we need to do now. No, oh, geez. this is the last thing I wanted to happen. Because now I can't do anything but swim away. Oh, there's a little alley back here. Hide back here and wait for the water to go down and see if there's anything behind here. Sometimes they'll hide stuff back here on you and me, you just never know. At least I do that a lot in like games like Skyward Sword. Let me get out this door before anything else happens. No, please, let me through the door. I think that also resets the time. No, it doesn't, because the water immediately went up. So, yeah, the timer is always ticking in the background, as it seems. So that's a good thing to know, I guess. I don't even get a heart. Thanks. Alright, so we need to kind of not jump in the water. Yeah, as soon as it goes down, run down here. Light these torches. Boom. A chest up here. Sweet. I wonder what's inside. Alright, let me just yeah, run up, up real quick or fail miserably one of the two. And open up this chest. I'm sure it's just a small item. I know it's actually a joy pendant. Uh, sweet, we needed actually a lot more of those than I thought we did. I thought we had the uh, number that we needed, but uh, it turns out we actually don't. Um, in order to get everything from Miss Marie, you actually need 45, and we only have like 20. Kind of ridiculous. Oh. Um. Yeah, that a bomb bomb immediately ran out, which is kind of sad. All right, I want to end up on this top platform, please. So don't go down until I'm done, please. At least don't. Yeah, just don't. Period. It's actually the only dungeon that the King of Red Lions comes with us for the first part of, like, the dungeon. He actually kind of, like, shows up with us. And how do I get up there? There's gotta be some way I get up there. Um, anything on the roof? No. Huh. Oh, how do I get up there, then? That's kind of... I actually don't know. We don't really have an item that allows me to jump higher. Unless I'm just missing something. I could just be missing something, for all I know. Oh yeah, these guys are... Again? Really? Alright, that took a lot of damage. Right, let me get out of here. Uh, there's something I'm missing, and I'm not sure exactly what it is. Yeah, that was just unfortunate placement, to be honest. I feel like there's another thing of torches I'm supposed to light up around here. And I don't know where I am. Um, I think maybe I'm supposed to defeat all the chews in the room, and that's the problem. Because that would seem like the only logical thing for why. Yeah, there we go. That fixed our problem. I just had to defeat all the chews. Yeah, sometimes I just kind of forget that enemies play a big part in how you progress in a Zelda game, and then I just choose to forget I guess or something because I just completely forget and then I end up doing stuff like that and I'm like well I don't know what to do now and I, I seem to do that a lot um, in all my let's plays and just in general while playing Zelda games once we place that down here the water should yeah stop flowing 
And with that, a door will open. And yeah, the King of Red Lions will no longer be able to travel with us, sadly. So uh, yeah, we're going to have to wait for He's going to have to wait for us down here at the bottom. And I should be able to you know, float over here to this and just float directly onto him. Sweet. And that cuts off, or that takes up a little bit more of our time. So we're not in here for it. An incredibly long amount of time, I guess. All right, let's head up. And uh, he doesn't really actually say anything. I thought he said something for some reason about you know us moving into the next room by ourselves. But yeah, now we're completely alone. This is a new enemy. This is a Beemos. Uh, I mean, it's not new to the Zelda series, but it's new to us in this game. And I don't think there's actually anything we can do about him either. Other than avoid him. Yeah, we just have to completely avoid him altogether. Oh, okay, I see. Alright, we have to carry both of these. Ow, yeah, I thought that might happen. How do I disable this? Is it with a bomb? I forget. Maybe with a bomb. No. Um, well, what do I use then? No, that's not it. I forget how you take down these guys. I always forget. I'm, I'm just never quite sure. I swear every game is slightly different. And it's just hard to tell. Um. I mean, I figure if I get right up next to the wall, he won't see me. Yeah, if I just hug the wall. I don't know why they didn't work the first time and why he saw me and started attacking. I knew, like, they only had a certain radius I could see. And usually, sometimes the rooms are just made to where they won't see if you hug the wall. Alright, so, uh, well, there's that puzzle solved, I guess. And once I stand here, um, oh, I didn't quite place this guy all the way on there. There we go. And with that, these platforms should start, yeah, moving. And, uh, but they just constantly move in this weird, awkward array of, yeah, this one dips slightly down, but don't fall, because you will fall in a bottomless pit, as I almost did. And then jump, yeah, to the other one, and then we're at the top. Yeah, that was pretty much the entirety of, like, floor one. Floor one included that area, too. And then now we're here at floor number two, actually. And uh, we still have quite a ways to go. So let's actually head this way. I want at least to get part of this area done before we end off the episode. I don't want to just end it off there. That seems kind of boring, just swimming around for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have to hit something over there, I'm sure. Take you out, and immediately take your buddy out with you. There we go. I saw we are supposed to do something about that little eyeball thing right there. But I'm not sure exactly what. Yeah, and here, we're going to get something brand new, I believe. Yeah, here we go. Seeker of the Goddess's Guidepost. Press ZR to call me and guide me to my place of truth. ZR. Huh. Oh, I see. You literally just press ZR and Link says, come on. Come on, buddy. I don't think he actually does damage to Link. He may actually do damage, and that's the case. Keep at least a little bit of distance. And then you should be good to go. Let's see. Yeah. Alright, now you have to just throw him across the, the gap. Oh! That puts a link back at the beginning. Huh. Um. For some reason, that didn't work. I'll just carry you, buddy. Never mind. They thought ahead. 
All right, never mind. I guess I'm carrying you all the way over still. Um, not really trying to get you over the gap, though. That's not something I figured out quite yet. At least he won't fall off. Oh, yeah, that didn't work either. Um, not really sure why. Unless I just jump across the gap with him? Is Link strong enough to even do that? I'm not even sure. Sometimes these puzzles can be a little confusing. Like, you know, do you throw him across? Do you jump across? Um, personally, I think the aesthetic of the temple, this temple looks really nice. And I think it looks cool. Um, I've never played it that much, to be honest. Because, to be honest, this is probably one of my least played Zelda games. Because, to be honest... It's not necessarily on my top five list of Zelda games. Like, I mean, it's a fun game and I enjoy playing it. But uh, maybe this, yeah, you just jump across. Wow, um, I feel kind of stupid now to be honest. But oh well, what can you do? Um, it's not necessarily my favorite Zelda, but uh, it is a fun one for sure. Um, and maybe this Let's Play will change my mind on it and there's a good chance that it will probably. Well, let's play seem to do that like Twilight Princess was already one of my favorites or it was my favorite and it just grew on me even more after let's playing it and just like that statue number one is in place would you look at that a pedestal has appeared and uh, looks like it's got something written on it there appears to be markings that indicate specific directions Huh, so let's maybe pull out our Wind Waker. Left, middle, right, middle. So we have to change the rhythm to 4-4 four, four, instead of 3-4. So left, middle, right, middle. And with that, we learn the command melody. And with that, the door is open. I cannot wait beyond the doors. Control them and guide them to their place of truth to open the path to the gods. Alright, sweet dude. Sure thing. And thanks for talking, even though you're just a statue. And uh, it looks like he's dead or something. Alright, but anyway guys, I think that's going to do it all for this episode here. So if you guys like this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. It's this channel a lot. And if you want to see more content like this, please do consider subscribing. Once again, guys, my name is Connor. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.